Hello, I am Dr. Lakshmi Kumar. I am a consultant interventional radiologist in Pace Hospitals, Hyderabad. Today we will discuss about a common topic called vascular malformations. Vascular malformations uh, are like uh, birth marks or swellings which are usually present at birth and they are composed of blood vessels. There are many different types of vascular malformations but the common ones are uh, three types. They are named after the type of blood vessels they contain. One is the venous malformation which contain the veins and the second one is the lymphatic malformation which contain the lymphatic vessels and the third one is arteriovenous malformations. Mm -hmm. They contain both arteries and uh, venous uh, blood vessels. As we all know arteries are the blood vessels which bring blood from the heart to the other parts of the body and veins are the blood vessels which bring the blood back from the parts of the body towards the heart. What the lymphatic vessels do is they bring the excess fluid in the tissue and the debris as, and sometimes fat from the intestines towards the heart. So these are the functions of blood vessels and if these uh, blood vessels uh, any of them is affected then we get this venous uh, vascular malformations. The vascular malformations are generally due to the abnormal development of the blood vessels. So most of them are present at birth and they occur by chance. Only in uh, rare cases they can be familial, means uh, they are inherited and they are in families. Most of them are uh, sporadic, means they occur by chance. Sometimes the vascular malformations can increase in size during illnesses or if there is any injury or uh, during uh, any hormonal changes like during the time of uh, adolescence or pregnancy, they can increase in size. Vascular malformations can be asymptomatic means there are no symptoms or they can be very symptomatic. So they can occur anywhere in the body from uh, head to toe, anywhere in the body all organs can be involved. So the vascular malformations uh, symptoms vary with the uh, type of the organ that is involved. If they are present in the skin, they can cause cosmetic problem. They can have a different colors like uh, red, black, purple, brown or bluish color or they can be uh, present as a swelling in the skin and they may cause ulceration of the skin means a wound in the skin and uh, they can lead to bleeding from that wound. Excess bleeding can lead to anemia also. If they are present in the brain, they can uh, lead to uh, symptoms like headache, seizures means uh, epilepsy or fits or they can cause a weakness in the muscles, gait disturbances means there is a disturbance in the walking pattern or they can cause uh, vision defects means uh, eyesight may be defective or your speech may become defective and uh, also uh, it can cause uh, problems in understanding uh, other 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 person's speech or thinking problems or uh, uh, other sensations like tingling numbness can also occur if there is a brain uh, vascular malformation similarly if the, they are present in the chest they can lead to uh, vomiting of blood uh, or uh, vomiting in the cough while you are coughing you may get blood in your cough and also they can lead to decrease in the uh, blood saturation levels if they are present in the abdomen they can lead to abdominal pain and if they are present in the intestines of the abdomen they can cause uh, blood in the stools means uh, blood in the motions and if they are in the urinary system they can lead to blood in your urine if they are in the your muscles or in your joints, they can lead to muscular weakness or joint pains. So these are all the various symptoms they can cause uh, depending upon the location where they are present in the body. Most of the vascular malformations, they can be seen uh, during the physical examination. Most of the times, patient or patient relatives notices this vascular malformation. There is a discoloration, focal discoloration or a large discoloration of the skin. So they will come to the doctor. So apart from uh, visual physical examination, uh, we do some other tests to confirm whether it is vascular malformation or is there any other thing that is causing this thing. So uh, we do routinely uh, imaging tests like uh, ultrasound or a CT with contrast, CT angiography or MRI, MR angiography or a direct uh, DSA angiography. 
Well, what we see in this angiography is, uh, is there any, what is the type of vessel that is present in this vascular malformation? Uh, well, the artery which is supplying to this vascular malformation, where it is coming from, and the vein which is draining this vascular malformation, where it is going. So, these are the things uh, that we uh, look in a imaging test. Also, in DSA angiography, what is DSA angiography means? In this uh, test, we do, uh, it's a minimally invasive test. We insert a small catheter, plastic tube into the artery or vein and we inject uh, some dye called contrast. By, by the help of this uh, contrast, we can see uh, the vascular malformation very clearly compared to CT or MR and we can also see clearly what is the artery that is supplying and uh, where is the vein going to. So, similarly in this uh, DSA angiography, uh, we can also treat the condition at the same time. So, these are the advantages of DSA angiography. Apart from this uh, imaging test, uh, sometimes we may require biopsy in confusing cases. Sometimes these vascular malformations can mimic other tumors or other swellings. In those conditions, we may require a biopsy. Means uh, we take a small sample with the help of a needle from that uh, area of abnormality and we send it to the lab to know whether it is a vascular malformation or is there any other condition. Also, this biopsy may be useful in uh, some con conditions to uh, look at the genetic makeup of the malformation means uh, is there any genetic condition uh, involving in this vascular malformation any genetic condition causing this vascular malformation to rule out that uh, we may order genetic test on this uh, biopsy sample so if the vascular malformation is in the brain it can lead to bleeding in the brain or uh, it can cause brain stroke that is a serious life threatening complication also if there is a large arteriovenous malformation which has high flow very high flow then it may cause uh, congestive heart failure means uh, if there is excessive load on the heart due to uh, increased uh, flow into the vascular malformation the heart may get tired and it can lead to heart failure that is one uh, serious complication also, if the venous malformations are very extensive and the flow of blood within the venous malformation is slow, the blood can get clotted. If the, this clotting is very much uh, excessive, then it can consume all the clotting factors in the blood. This will lead to uh, bleeding in other parts of the body. I uh, mean, if, even if there is small trauma, it can cause uh, too much excessive bleeding because the clotting factors are all, all used by this venous malformation. This is called a conductive coagulopathy or local intravascular coagulation. So, this is one more uh, life threatening complication due to uh, vascular malformations. Also, uh, venous malformations can lead to one more complication called pulmonary thromboembolism. Uh, if there is a clot in the venous malformation, it can break and go into the deep veins and from there it can travel to the lung veins where it can block the lung veins. This condition is called pulmonary thromboembolism. So, the vascular malformations treatment depends upon uh, where is the vascular malformation located, which part of the body, what are the symptoms that the patient is facing due to vascular malformation, what is the age of the patient and also depends upon the type of vascular malformation, what is the type of vascular malformation. So, various treatment options that are available are uh, sclerotherapy. Uh, this is uh, one of the commonest uh, uh, treatment that we do. What we do in sclerotherapy is under ultrasound guidance, uh, we see uh, where is the vascular malformation located and we inject a small needle into that uh, vessel and then we inject a, a medicine called sclerosant. This sclerosant irritates the inner lining of the vessel and it causes clotting of that uh, uh, vessel and it will permanently block that uh, vessel. This uh, clot will not be uh, as much larger uh, compared to the uh, native clots which form due to the complication arising from the vascular malformation. So, so this will permanently block the vascular malformation. Other treatments are embolization. If there is a high flow within the vascular malformation, we need to tackle that with uh, embolization apart from sclerotherapy. What we do in embolization is we insert a small catheter or a plastic tube into your artery or vein under X-ray guidance and uh, ultrasound guidance. We take that uh, catheter to the vascular malformation. Mostly this is done in the 
arterial venous malformation. So we take that to get that through the artery or vein and then we inject uh, some glue particles or coils or other particles to uh, block that uh, vessel. So this method is called embolization. Other treatment options are laser therapy. Laser therapy is uh, generally done for superficial lesions which are present in skin or in the mouth. Uh, they can decrease the pigmentation and they can decrease the symptoms. Uh, the other treatment is surgery. So if the vascular malformation is amenable for surgery and it is localized, we can remove that uh, uh, vascular malformation using surgery. This surgery may be uh, preceded by embolization or sclerotherapy to decrease the amount of bleeding during the surgery. So the treatment of uh, vascular malformation is uh, uh, done by a team of doctors. Uh, uh, generally it involves uh, interventional radiologist and the plastic surgeon, a pediatric surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon, depending upon the uh, body part which is involved. So it's a teamwork. As the vascular malformation is a genetic condition, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, on, sometimes it is uh, present at birth, there is no uh, preventive uh, thing that we can do to prevent this uh, uh, vascular malformation. But one thing we can do is, uh, if the vascular malformation is genetic, we uh, uh, the advise the couple to undergo genetic counseling with geneticists to decrease the chance of passing this vascular malformation to their children. So that is one thing that we can do to decrease the incidence of vascular malformation. These uh, vascular malformations, uh, they generally respond well to the treatment. We generally treat those whenever they are symptomatic. Whenever, if they are asymptomatic, we don't treat them. So, if they are causing more symptoms in a particular part of the body, we treat only that part of the body to, the, to relieve the symptoms. So, uh, one more unfortunate thing is, uh, even if we treat uh, uh, some blood vessels, they will get blocked. But again, they may recur in the future. So, uh, patients will uh, require regular follow-up. So, they have to uh, do their own self-examination. If the malformation is increasing in size, they may have to come to the doctor again uh, for treatment, uh, for uh, other session of treatment. As we have discussed, most of the vascular malformations occur by chance. Means, they uh, don't run in families. So, most of the time occur by chance. But uh, sometimes they can occur in families. Means, uh, there is a genetic defect and uh, parents can uh, transmit this uh, uh, malformation to their children. This can uh, pass from the families. So, in those conditions, we may require a genetic testing. So, some conditions like uh, uh, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, kleppel trenuveni syndrome, blue rubber blood nevus syndrome, and Parker Weber syndrome. These are some of the examples, some conditions in which the vascular malformations are hereditary and they run in families. In those conditions, we uh, advise uh, genetic testing to confirm that this is this syndrome. So, also the use of genetic testing is, uh, nowadays we have advanced medicines. If we detect a particular genetic defect, we can target that uh, gene and we can give uh, that uh, medication uh, to decrease the vascular malformations uh, symptoms or to decrease the size of vascular malformations. So most of the times the vascular malformations are not hereditary, means they occur by chance during birth due to abnormal development. But rarely they can be genetic, they can run in families. So rarely they are genetic, most of the times they are sporadic or they occur by chance. These vascular malformations are unfortunately, they are uh, we can say permanent because uh, most of the times they are present at birth and they grow slowly along with the child. They increase in size proportional to the child growth. Even if we treat them uh, due to symptoms, uh, we, we need to treat them if they are more symptomatic. Uh, even if we block some uh, vessels to decrease the symptoms, uh, after some time they may recur again. So, unfortunately, we can say these are uh, permanent. Vascular malformations are different from vascular tumors. Vascular tumors, examples are hemangioma, Kaposi's sarcoma, hemangioendothelioma. So, 
the difference between a vascular tumor and a vascular malformation is the vascular tumor grows rapidly compared to the child growth means uh, if a child limb has grown 1 cm the tumor may go 3-4 cm so whereas the vascular uh, malformation will grow proportional to the growth of the child and uh, some vascular tumors like uh, hemangiomas they can uh, uh, spontaneously decrease in size and they may disappear on their own whereas this uh, vascular malformation they will uh, eventually require treatment they will not disappear on their own most of the times as most of the vascular malformations are uh, present at birth so we can call them as birth defect yes they can be called as birth defect Vascular malformation are seen in uh, 1 to 4 percent of babies. Means if there are 100 babies born, we can see vascular malformation in 1 to 4 babies. Among these vascular malformations, venous malformations are the most common type of vascular malformations. So there are two issues uh, during pregnancy regarding vascular malformation. One issue is whether the vascular malformation present in the mother is, uh, can it get transmitted to the baby that is one issue. Second is the vascular malformation present in the mother can it increase in size uh, and can it uh, cause more problems during pregnancy that is second issue. Regarding first, first issue. Uh, regarding first issue uh, whether the vascular malformation can be passed into the child so to answer that question uh, we need to do some genetic tests and uh, you need to be get counseled with a geneticist so uh, there are some hereditary syndromes uh, like uh, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia clepal tenuvanni syndrome park weber syndrome starch weber syndrome these can be transferred uh, to the child from a parent so to decrease the chance of uh, transmitting this uh, condition you need a genetic counseling regarding second issue whether uh, the vascular malformation can increase in size during pregnancy can it lead to more problems during pregnancy uh, to answer that question uh, we need to assess the uh, vascular malformation before you are planning for pregnancy what is the extent of vascular malformation how many uh, malformations are present in the body where are the locations where they are present so we need to assess all these uh, uh, things before uh, uh, you are advised for pregnancy so if they are uh, larger in size uh, if you feel that uh, they can increase in size during pregnancy and they may lead to bleeding we need to tackle those vascular malformations before pregnancy we will uh, do some uh, sclerotherapy or embolization or we may advise some compression therapy to decrease the chance of uh, they becoming uh, more uh, aggressive during pregnancy due to hormonal changes so it is uh, safe to uh, get pregnant uh, with vascular malformation it's not a contraindication only thing is you need to take some precautions before planning pregnancy you need to consult doctor and uh, you may require treatment of those vascular malformation before continuing with the pregnancy previously uh, the vascular malformation and hemangioma they uh, the terms are uh, were used interchangeably Nowadays, with uh, proper terminology, we are uh, calling uh, each uh, vascular malformation with a different term. There is a, a very well established classification. So, the hemangiomas come under vascular tumors, which is different from a vascular malformation. So, both come under the common term called vascular anomaly. So, vascular anomalies include vascular malformations and vascular tumors. And in, under the vascular malformations, you get the hemangioma. So, hemangioma is a type of vascular tumor, it's not a vascular malformation. So, the uh, difference between a tumor and a vascular malformation means a vascular tumor will grow uh, rapidly in compared to the child growth, whereas a vascular malformation grows in proportionate to the growth of the child. And one more difference is the most of the hemangiomas, the good news is they can disappear on their own uh, with uh, increasing the age of the child. Whereas most of the vascular malformations, they won't disappear and uh, eventually most of the vascular malformations, they require treatment. Whereas most of the hemangiomas, they don't require treatment. Only some persistent hemangiomas, they require treatment. So this is the difference between vascular malformations and hemangiomas.